Hey guys, Malfunction here. Today I want to talk about comic book and comic book art specifically. Um, as you know, uh, for the last few months I've been, well since July I've been working on Incredigirl. Um, but it's not the only book I've been working on. I've also been working on um, The Circle, the revised version of it. Um, just finished issue 4. And I'm about to start um, editing issue 3. Five and six. It's a book that I wrote myself, uh, based off a um, of a TV. Uh, sorry, of a feature student feature film that I made when I was at art school, at film school, and then turned it into a comic book. And then now, twelve years later, I guess, two thousand six. Yeah, started writing in two thousand three. Anyway, so I guess sixteen years later, now it's a comic book. It's been a comic book for a while, but now it's actually in print. So, the reason I want to talk about comic books. And comic book art today specifically is because there's some silly notion that you can't incorporate fantasy into uh, comic book art. I mean, it's a freaking fantasy genre, right? It's like the whole thing is false. It's all fake. It's like nobody has actual real superpowers. So when you're creating superheroes or whatever, or monsters and all that, heaven, hell, all the different genres that comes into it, you're basically popping out whatever you can think of out of your head and um, and then you get the artist if you're not the artist yourself um, to work off that now you you know you can either you know if you have the money you'll find the best artist around if you don't you'll find you know find a low level artist or you know or someone who's willing to work with you uh, on the back end so that if something sells then they'll be able to work with you now a lot of what's happening online right now, especially when it comes to comic books and comic book art, is that you have people who really don't understand that, that whole creative process of it and why why uh, certain artists work the way they do and why they work on things that they do because it's their style. Um, I have a very unique style because I, uh, I use tracing a lot and I use um, a lot of um, uh, photo and uh, you know, sort of, and then mess with it, and just totally just run my, you know, uh, my Wacom pen all over it, and just mess the hell out of it, and then uh, then create something out of it. So I'm not a I'm a self-taught artist when it comes to that. So because of that, you know, I um I learn as I go along, but also <clears throat> I have a unique style. Like every single artist out there, they have a unique style. Like if you look at this one here, this is uh, Merca uh, and Dolfo. She's Italian. If I remember right, so this is her style. So she's into anthropophized uh, animals and stuff. And she has, as you can see here, she's got a very thin waist. This is her, um, her book that came out. So, and then it's got a very large backside and very large breasts and so on. So, you know, it's, it's sort of, you go into this whole fantasy area and people, uh, and because really it's escapism and the whole art form is an escapism. Less like going to movies and stuff. And then, um, you know, because you want to take that hour and a half when you go to the movies or two hours, depending on what sort of movie it is, and just hang out and just leave your, leave everything, you, the concerns of the day at the door, and you want to escape. And you want to read a, um, watch a good movie, a good story, good characters, and carry on. Um, and so, same thing when it comes to comic books. You, you, <coughs> excuse me. You um you know you find uh, a artist you uh, sorry a comic book that you like you look like the look of it you know uh, because I'm so eclectic in what I like and because I write differently I you know I want you know I'll write a crime drama then I'll write a superhero comic then I'll write a uh, um a um a sci-fi uh you know character or a fantasy world or demons and angels because it's just you know trying to create as much as possible. Of the ideas that you have in your head, putting on a pen and paper. So, it's really strange to have people start suddenly becoming puritans of what someone can do, and what you can put online or what you can create. Now, this is a very bad thing because the reason for that is that when you start giving people um, room to have a say into what you're creating, as long as it's not, you know within the bounds of law, right? I'm not talking about some weird stuff out there. I'm just talking about just creative fantasy stuff. Uh, 
for adults. Or, you know, and if you're doing for children, then it's, it has to be within that scope. Uh, and if you're doing for, you know, teenagers, it's got to be in that scope. Um, so there's certain things you can do in a, in a uh, mature reader book that you can't do in a children's book and vice versa, all right? Or you can write for everybody, all right? Which in critical is for everybody. So anybody could pick it up and go, hey, it's teen fuss, but hey, there's no swearing, there's no sort of sexual things in it. It's just clean fun. Um, but, but the problem now is that because we've given voice, allowed people who've got nothing to do with the medium or, or actually have worked in the industry or actually have created anything of value, they now have, have found themselves a voice online to come in and say, well, you know, as I mean, somebody wrote, we are our organs. So, you know, if you look at Mirka and Dalfish, you know, it's like you go, well, where's her waistline? This is a female artist, her own book and a writer of that book. So, you know, where's her organs? So, you know, this is a female writer. So if you have a guy doing the same thing, why is it something weird? And suddenly you got to speak out about it. Yeah. Now you got to attack him, and you got to attack us at work, and got to go. Well, where are our organs? Have you ever seen a female before? Do you know what a woman looks like? It's like, well, you live in the world. Of course, everybody's seen what a female looks like, what a man looks like. But the other scope is that you don't sort of you hear these comments about men. When you get, you know, when you get men with bulky muscles, you know, you have something like, um, you know, like Conan, all flashed out, always without a, t without a top on, and you go, well, nobody comments about that. You don't have any females going, well, you know, you should be wearing a shirt. You know, why has he got such big muscles? That's not real. But because it's fantasy, right? You got you to gotta realize that comic book movies and all these things are for us to escape out of our reality for half an hour. If you're reading a comic book, it's only 15 minutes, all right? And you're just escaping. And if you allow people to stop you from escaping and try to infuse reality into every single form of art, what you're going to find is it's actually just going to be gray jumpsuits, as I like to say, you know, gray jumpsuits, because there's just nothing in it. There's no, no fun, no color. No, uh, no humanity. It's empty of art and color, and um, so what you know. So I mean, the two books I'm, I'm currently um, collecting right now is uh, Dead Rabbit. Well, sorry, it was Dead Rabbit, but now it's called Dead Eyes because of lawsuit, right? So this is by um, the guy who um, was working on Deadpool for a while there, uh, Jerry Duggan, and John McCrea, if you know his artwork. Um, and also, like I said, Mirka and Dolpho, right? Unnatural. So it's about an anthropomorphized dystopian world where you can't um, love someone outside of your own species, like animal species, like an anthropomorphized animal species. So if you're a pig anthropomorphized, you can't be in love with a werewolf or wolf anthropomorphized, anthropomorphized person, human, whatever. Uh, so... Whereas um, Dead Eyes leans towards reality, right? And it's based around about New York 1940s, I think, is around the gangster times. Um, the other book's futuristic, right? So, and then not only that, there's another one where it's, it's about, uh, by the same artist, Merka, uh, writer of her own book, um, Uns Unsacred, about angels and demons, right? So, it's the idea that we have to have people watching over creators and artists and writers online who have probably never, ever created anything themselves. Because that's the only reason they would say such things. Because if they had created something, they would be quiet about it. Because they know what it's like to be an artist or creator of something, or a writer, or coming up with something, right? So... It's like being Spider-Man, like, he's human. Why does he have, why does he shoot cobwebs, right, out of his palm, the wrist? Or Wolverine, why does the, you know, the bones, um, metal blades come out of fingers? Well, because it's fantasy. Um, so, you know, most of the time Wolverine's running around with a shirt on, but nobody complains about that, right? So you got someone bulked up, you know, t steroid type body shapes, and you've got to, you know, as a male, and no females out there going, you know, that, that, that just can't be. I mean, you look at 
you know, you look at Aquaman, um, let me just show you, you know, up there, right? He was mostly without a shirt, in the, you know, Jason Momoa, amazing guy, without a shirt in the entire movie, right? But nobody's saying that he should have had a shirt on. So the Puritans are very hypocritical in what they say because you, 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 it's like you can say something about one gender, but you can't say anything in another gender. It's the same thing when it comes about race. You can say something about one race, but you can't say something about the other race, right? Because people get in arms. It's wrong to say something bad about one race, but it's okay to say something bad about another race, right? So these are the same people that do that. Excuse me. But these same people, they don't actually buy anything. They want to be involved in your art and in your in your um, in your um, cult, uh, pop culture or into your uh, I guess um, into your franchise of stuff, into the uh, the comic book uh, companies or whatever. They don't want to actually. They don't actually go out and buy stuff. They don't actually buy the um, the books. Uh, the movies, the DVDs, they don't buy the um, the T-shirts, they don't wear, you know, they don't have the toys or merchandise. But they complain online about the way something looks, right? So where are our organs? So if you have something like that, you kind of go, well, why would you want to even make a name thing like that? Well, that's because they want attention. And the more attention you give somebody, the more they want. So, I mean, it's, you know, but you can't, not give them attention because you got to call them out because if you don't call people out when they say stuff like that they slowly get into the uh, into, into the whole uh, uh, say like if you're into D&D right and you get somebody in there and they start coming in with a nice you know thing an agenda they want to change things around from the inside right they want to say well now you can't do that you can't do that you can't do that it's like what well, we accepted you in because we thought you had good attentions, because you wanted to be part of our group, uh, because we're welcoming you, you know, we're open to that. But then these people, don't, they don't come in with good intentions. They want to come in to get uh, granny points, social media points, right, virtue points. But at the end of the day, 